Hey friends, thank you so much for joining me on my YouTube channel. My name is Noelle Ames and today I want to talk about marriage. I'm going to give you five tips um, that have helped me find happiness in my marriage, but I want to start off by saying that I am in no way an expert or saying that I have this all figured out. These are simply things that have worked for me and might work for you. <laughs> so all of these talks that I'm going to do are more, I want to look at them like I'm talking to my best friend and having a conversation, an open, you know, totally non-judgmental conversation with her and knowing that, you know, she's not going to take everything that I say as fact. I need to do this. Is this the only way? But more as like, this is what's worked for her. Awesome. Some of this might work for me. Some of it might not. That's where I'm coming from. <laughs> so let's get right into it. So before I dive into the five tips that I'm going to share, I want to start off by saying that you need to get rid of this idea that when you find the love of your life or your soulmate, like that there's going to be no problems, that the relationship's just going to be easy and you won't really have to put much work into it. And it's just going to be all good all of the time. <laughs> that is just not the case. I'm going to start off by saying that I have found the love of my life. I know that he's my soulmate. I have never been happier in a relationship, um, but we still are human, right? Two humans coming together. We are human. We are not perfect. So there's going to be, you know, problems or things that you have to work through, challenges that come up. That's just normal. And I think that the sooner that we can accept that, then all of a sudden we're not expecting it to be, you know, sunshine and rainbows all the time. So we can actually see it for what it is and not make it bigger than it is, right? I feel like if we come in with this perspective that there's going to never be a problem, that when a problem does come up, we're like, oh my gosh, no, like we're just so much more, you know, consumed by it and get anxious about it and say that it shouldn't be there. But the more we can just accept that that's we're human and and part of being human is not being perfect. Um, so we're going to mess up. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to have to adjust. The more that we can look at relationships as a learning process, I like love to look at them as like this educational tool to, you know, find out more about ourselves, find out more about the other person, find out more about how we love to be, um, you know, cared for and loved and how others like to be loved. Um, I just think that that's a way better perspective than saying, oh, when I find the love of my life, we're going to be in this bubble of bliss and never, you know, ever experience any problem. So that being said, I would say that there is a honeymoon phase. <laughs> I think why we have this idea is because there is that honeymoon phase we find in relationships when they're really good, right? With Ryan, it was like a month or two months of just like, nothing mattered other than our relationship and what was going on in our relationship. And there was, it was just bliss all of the time, but that burnt out just like, you know, every other relationship, that's just not reality all of the time. And so what do you do once that burns out? And now you're confronted with this human and they're confronted with your humanness. And it's like, oh, do we just dip out and run because you know that high is not there anymore? No, right? If they're the love of your life, you show up, you show up for the relationship and you do the work. So this, these five things I have learned through doing the work, right? Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna dive in. The first one you may have heard before. Um, the first one is find out their love language. So the other human that you're in love with, congrats. <laughs> it is so amazing to find the love of your life. Um, I have a podcast on settling. I have a podcast on our love story. Go listen to those. Please do not settle. I just have to put that in there because Oh, if I would have settled, I wouldn't have found Ryan and I didn't even know I was settling until I found Ryan. So just go listen to those because it's really important to not settle. You deserve to find the love of your life. And so does the other person, right? If you're settling, that other person is settling too. They may not know it, but they deserve the love of their life too. And if you're settling or if you don't feel content in your relationship, um, then you're not serving them either. So 
side note, closed. <laughs> okay, learn their love language. So this person that you're in love with has been raised by a separate family than you and has gone through separate circumstances and all of these different things that have brought them to you today. So that being said, that they may not love the same way that you do and they may not experience love the same way that you do so finding out their love language is so important and learning how to love them that way is so important because you could think that you're loving them every single day say you are just like pouring words of affirmation into them, you know, constantly telling them that they're doing a good job. Like, hey, babe, I love how, you know, amazing you are at showing up for your education. Hey, babe, I really appreciated that you took out the garbage and did the laundry and bought the groceries. Like, that means so much to me. You could be saying all these words of affirmation. And if that person doesn't experience words of affirmation as love, then they could literally go every single day thinking that you are not showing them love. And so it's not that you don't love them. It may just be that you are not showing them love in the way that they experience it. And we all experience it so different. Um, Ryan and I have some similar love languages, but some different ones. Um, and so learning how to love him. And it's so fun when you do, because then you can actually see them light up. Like, for example, um, Ryan is words of affirmation. And so you know, me telling him and affirming something that he's done that he did out of love probably um, and me seeing it and him knowing that I've seen it and then affirming it is so is so therapeutic to him and I can see him fill up with love and it's so, so satisfying. Now, if I was, you know, doing these say acts of service, I don't think that's one of his love languages. So say I am making, I mean, he does, you know, love when I make him a meal. But what I'm saying is that's not his number one. And so if I'm making him a meal and I'm running all these errands and I'm do cleaning up the kitchen and I'm cleaning up our room and I'm doing all these things to love him because acts of service is one of my love languages, I, you know, could go every single day and he would be like not feeling love. And I would be over here being like, I'm doing all these things to love you and, you know, how do you not see it, right? So there was a disconnect because I'm, I was, and we often do, if we don't do this work, we often love from the way that we feel love. So like I just said, I experience love. So my, my love language is when someone does a act of service. So when someone, you know, cleans up something or, you know, makes me a meal or, all those different things, right? Any act of service is my love language. So when someone does that for me, I feel loved. So most of us will, you know, love other people through that. So we'll say, okay, well then everyone experiences love when I do an act of service. When I make them a meal, they're going to experience love because I do, right? So it's normal for us to do that. But if that's not your, the love of your life's love language, lots of love here, <laughs> then you'll be missing the love, right? There won't, you won't feel that connection. They won't feel loved, even though you're doing everything that you can. Um, so the earlier on that you can learn their love language, the better, because then you can, we all want to love them, right? We all want to make them feel loved. They do want to do the same for us. So the, the sooner that you can realize that you guys aren't the same and that you may not love the same, um, the better, because then you can start loving them the way they feel and experience love. <laughs> um, and that's just like, you can look up, I think the test online, five love languages, or you can just try them out. If you look them up and try them out, like I literally see Ryan light up when I say words of affirmation. Um, he's also physical touch. I can tell that he is more full of love when I am giving him a back rub or scratching his head or, you know, just close to him. Um, so, and we share that one, which is amazing. <laughs> so, um, that being said, just find that out. Um, the five lung love language book is also super helpful, but you don't have to buy that. They have a test online that, um, you can have your partner answer all the questions. You can answer all the questions and all of a sudden you guys know how to love each other. <laughs> so that's a lighthearted one. Um, they're going to get a little deeper as we go. But number two is carve out time 
So schedule in time for each other that is one-on-one -on -one without phones. <laughs> and you guys, all the words in that are super important. So scheduling the time. You're going to think, especially if you guys live together um, and you may have the same schedule, so you're spending a lot of time in the same area, you may think, well, we're always together. You know, like someone could like my, another love language of mine is quality time. So, um, you know, we could be in the same room all of all day. We could be in the same house all day. And if we haven't taken time to actually have quality time, you know, without our phones, face to face, looking each other in the eyes, asking questions, doing an activity together, whatever it is, if we haven't had that, I feel depleted and I feel like I haven't been in the relationship that day. So um, carving up, scheduling in this time is so important because like I said, if you're spending all, all day together in the same house, you may never schedule in that time because you think, oh, it'll just organically happen. It's not going to happen. That's just not how we work. So schedule in, and it can be 30 minutes, an hour a day. Um, ours lately has been taking Stony on a walk, which is our, our dog. I love her. Her name's Stony Malone after Post Malone's album. I think that's in our love story on the podcast, so go look into that. But um, anyways, we take her on a walk, we leave our phones at home, and that is our quality time one-on-one, -on -one, just me and him talking to each other, you know, digesting our day, digesting our week, whatever it is, it's therapeutic. And if we, you know, in the winter months, maybe we won't be able to go on a walk. So I am already thinking about what we're going to do then. And it can be as simple as like playing a board game or even watching a TV show together. Sometimes I don't like that because you are kind of like zoned out and not paying attention to the other person, but it can be going out to eat and not bringing your phones. Um, we could sit by the fire and play cards. Uh, as long as you're paying, your full attention is on the other person, your phone is not near, you don't have other distractions going on. Um, I think an hour, half hour a day is going to really, really help your relationship. And just make sure that that other person knows that you're showing up for the relationship, that the relationship is important to you, quality time is important to you, uh, because you can really start resenting the other person when um inside you know you're not oh this is another tip that I'm gonna have to ask I'm gonna have to add this on here okay another side tip is ask for what you need okay that one was that quality time we got now I'm gonna slide one in here ask for what you need now this is so hard and it's so much easier for us to get frustrated and let it fester and then kind of like blurt it out and it comes out wrong and it's an angry tone to it I want you to ask for what you need before it gets there so for example for me this looks like quality time I really really value quality time so for me this would look like him being on his phone us sitting in a room together and I was probably on my phone too but in my head I'm like man I just wish you know uh we had some quality time without our phones and we could spend you know one-on-one -on -one time talking and it's so funny because when I blurt this out and I let it fester and I get you know all worked up about it and I don't ask for what I need all of a sudden I'm just <laughs> and Ryan's like well you could have just asked you know he could he's like you could have just asked I would have loved to do that like now we're you know in an argument that isn't needing to happen but if you would have just asked for what you needed we could have just done that instead so it's a lot easier said than done but you guys if there's something on your heart that you are not getting out of the relationship ask for it Seriously, like if the other person loves you, they're gonna meet you where you're at. They're gonna say, wow, thank you for letting me know, right? Maybe they don't say it like that, but <laughs> now they're gonna know what you need and now they can show up for it. I think the problem with this is that we have this story in our head, like, oh, he should be doing this. Or I just, you know, if he loved me, he'd be doing this. And, you know, he should know this. And it's like, no right? Like, just let that go. They don't know all of your needs. The only one that knows your needs are you. So ask for them. Be clear on them. Maybe maybe even take time to like journal about what is it that I actually need, right? Because when you get past that resentment and 
expecting them to know what you need then you get down to like okay what is it that's not being met and what do I need to ask for and then all of a sudden that person can actually do something about it when you're just like creating that story in your mind and resenting them and then getting angry about something on the surface that isn't actually what you're mad about <laughs> that does no good and that doesn't help that person show up for you the way that you want them to so ask for what you need that is a really great tip that i didn't even put on the list so <laughs> going into the next one um this actually kind of goes into the next one really well so argue well what I mean by that is when you are arguing, and I don't even like this word because I think it's just arguing in a relationship is necessary and shouldn't be something that we shy away from. I think the word argue is why we don't like to talk about it. But what I mean is just have have conversations that are hard. Um, like it comes with asking for what you need, right? Um, have these conversations. And what I mean by argue well is make sure that you're in a good headspace to have that hard conversation when we get in our fight or flight kind of like i'm trying to prove you wrong i need to be right i need to talk louder and i'm not listening to you anymore that conversation needs to just be walked away from for a moment so tips on arguing well is notice when you need to walk away when you're no longer able to listen to the other person and instead you're listening to respond we've all been there right we've all been in an argument where we don't even hear the other person and we're just waiting for them to stop talking so we can say what we mean that's not a conversation that's you arguing your point <laughs> and if you're actually trying to get to a end goal a mutual end goal which is relationships or a compromise or whatever a solution um, you have to listen to the other person so sometimes the emotions are too high and you're too just in it that you need to just take a moment and sometimes that's like five minutes sometimes we just need to sleep on it you guys, that's okay. You don't need to solve everything, all of the problems right now here. Um, you can give yourself some time and you can even do that for someone else. Hey, maybe we just take a moment. Like if you see somebody else not listening to you, you can easily say, hey, let's just take a moment from this and you know, take our separate time and we can come back to this later on. I really, really wanna talk about this and solve this with you, but I just don't feel like right now is the right time. That is amazing and that's gonna do way more for your relationship than trying to just butt heads until you get exhausted and then you're both just like defeated and like now you can't even talk about anything. <laughs> um, I just burped. I've been burping a lot lately. <laughs> Anyways, so arguing well is a skill and it's something that comes from not shying away from relation or, you know, relational arguments or difficult conversations, but knowing when it's a time to do it and when it's a time to maybe step back from it. Um, and another tip I put in there, just want to make sure that you got was make sure that when you are in this conversation that you are truly listening to the other person listen and when that person is done talking you can then take what they said and then formulate your argument back you don't have to do that while they're speaking and it's okay to have silence right if someone is formulating thoughts in their head let them right oftentimes we think it needs to be this like boom 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 you should know exactly what to say no sometimes you need to process what just happened, what they just said, and then figure out, okay, this is what I thought. Now I'm getting this information from them and I'm going to put that together and give you something back, right? It doesn't have to be this like speedy process. Um, so arguing well is a skill and it's something that we really shouldn't shy away from. And I don't want you to feel any shame if you argue with your significant other. I honestly think that's amazing because that means that both of you are speaking your needs and not shying away from saying what's on your heart and what you need from the relationship. The only time that it gets negative is when it's, um, you know, one person focus. It's not us focus. That's another tip I would give to argue well is always knowing that 
when you're arguing about something, it's you guys versus the problem, not you two versus each other. You know what I mean? So it's it's not like you guys are arguing. Like in any other relationship, yeah, it probably is the person versus the person. But when it comes to a romantic relationship, marriage, you guys should look at all of these problems, set the problem outside of you, and yes, it may feel like you're kind of against each other because you have different opinions on the whatever the problem is, but know always in your heart and argue from a place of connectedness, from we're going after this problem together. We want to both find a solution to this problem that feels good to both of us rather than being like it's me versus you and only one of us is going to come out of this argument feeling good. That's not that's not a healthy relationship in my opinion because then one person is feeling again resentful and like their needs aren't getting met, right? If you truly love the other person, you want them to have their needs met as well as yours and sometimes that takes some compromising sometimes you can find a solution that feels good to both of you so just looking at it from just taking a step back from the problem and making it something outside of you rather than um, you versus each other will really really help I think in arguing well another tip that I'm going to try to do with our kids is not argue in front of other people it's going to be hard because sometimes it will be about them um but I've been really practicing this with our friends. Um, if I feel something come up that I am not okay with or that I want to, you know, kind of talk about, I think it's so healthy and okay. And again, gives me more time to think about what it is I'm actually mad about um, to just kind of not throw it down and never talk about it again, but throw it back and say, okay, that's something that I need to bring up later in a environment that is conducive to that kind of conversation. I don't need to make everyone else in this social environment feel uncomfortable or that they're a part of our argument now or you know what I mean like I just don't see any anything good coming from that maybe you have a different perspective on that maybe you need to do it in the moment to feel good do that if that's what feels good to you but for me it feels so much better to keep our um problems to ourselves and kind of like kind of I don't know it's kind of like sacred in that way right because it's your union between the two of you I think it's important to be able to it's hard <laughs> it takes a lot of a lot of practice but to not argue in front of other people is what I'm saying um that's another thing to argue well is to keep it between the two of you and like I said I'm practicing this with our friends which is really easy um to be honest it's gotten a lot easier but with kids I think it's gonna be a little harder <laughs> so um I'll stay tuned on that but I do think it is healthy when you can to kind of you know honor that there's a problem there and really accept that and and don't again throw it away or throw it in the garbage and not ever look at it but to give yourself the space to be in that social circle let that go for the time being and come back to it later when it's a good time to address it <laughs> okay that was a long one argue well another tip I have is maintain your individual lives. I don't know why, but we think that when we get in a relationship that we have to do everything together and that, you know, our lives are just always one and that our individuality that we once had before this relationship, which was majority of our life if you're young, um, is all of a sudden gone and doesn't need our attention and is no longer necessary. I would argue the opposite. I would say that it needs more attention and it's more necessary now that you're in a relationship because before it was the only way you operated, right? You were always doing what you wanted and hanging out with your friend group and doing the hobbies that you loved. Now that you're in a relationship, you have to be more proactive about creating time in your schedule to be an individual, to do things just for you. Um, and yes, you can do them as a couple. Like you can do things that, for example, Ryan's super, super into golf. And so sometimes I go along and golf with him. Sometimes I just go watch him do his thing. 
but he still has that individual hobby that I don't necessarily share that he pours a lot of time and energy into. And I think that's so healthy. I have yoga, right? I love yoga. I'm obsessed with yoga. I could do yoga all day, every day. Ryan, again, he'll come to some yoga classes with me. Um, he'll come watch me teach a yoga class, but it's not his hobby it's still individual to me and so sometimes most of the time I'm going by myself most of the time he's going to golf by himself um, also having your own friends having your own friend groups yes you can um, hang out together you can bring your friends together you can have friends together but I think it's so important to continue to foster those individual relationships that you uniquely have with other people other hobbies other whatever it is, the things that you did before you were ever in a relationship, those things are important to you, right? There's a reason that you did them. And so just because you're in a relationship does not mean that you have to just give up your individuality. Um, I think it's really healthy and really important. Again, I think it's going to lead to resentment if you feel like you have to do everything with that other person and that you can't be an individual in that relationship, that's not healthy and that's um, gonna end up becoming unhealthy. If, it, if it's not right now, it's just because you haven't had enough time with him yet to need your own release, your own place of being just you by yourself, not you as a married person, if you know what I mean. Okay, <sighs> another tip, let go of control. This is another idea that I don't think a lot of people talk about. We think that it's easier for us to think about this with friends. So let's start there. So if you have a best friend, you can see their lives from the outside or from a different perspective, and you may have some advice or opinions on the way that they live their life. But if you're in a healthy friendship, you don't try to change them. You don't try to make them into who you want them to be, right? You don't try to make, and oftentimes when we're trying to change someone, we're trying to make them more like us. Like, just think about it. If you just thought about it, you're like, oh wait, yeah, <laughs> I do do that. So with a friend, it's easier to be like, okay, I can't control you. You are who you are. I have to accept you for who you are. And me trying to change you is just a waste of energy. And it's probably going to hurt our relationship because no one wants to be changed. Uh, everyone just wants to be accepted as who they are. And so you can accept a friend and be like, you know what, that's just who you are. I Instead, you need to take it a step further back, right? If you actually really want to change that person and there's things about that person that you are so not down with and you just can't get over, you don't have to be friends with that person, right? So that's a lot easier for us to do in a friendship. Now I'm going to bring this to a marriage or a romantic relationship. You cannot change them. If you try to change them and you spend your entire relationship trying to change them, they're going to get sick of it and they're probably going to leave you because, again, no one wants to be changed, right? It is only up to the individual person to change themselves. So, tip for the single ladies or the ones in relationships that are dating. The one tip that I could give you that would change your life and save a lot of turmoil is find someone that you don't want to change. Now, there's a caveat to that. I'm not saying they're gonna be perfect. I'm not gonna say that there isn't gonna be things about them. Again, they're human. So there's gonna be things about them that you're not like stoked about, that you're like, hmm, that's, that's kinda different. <laughs> or I don't really like that. But there's gonna be things you're willing to compromise on, willing to be okay with, because you wanna love that person. And there's going to be things that you're so not down with compromising on, okay? There's going to be things like maybe he drinks way too much or, you know, those, those, those things that are just kind of like a non-negotiable for you. You're like, I just can't get down with that. Find out what those are because the sooner you can find out what your non-negotiables are, the easier it will be for you to filter out the ones, the people 
yeah, um, you know, your your future husband, um, the easier it will be for you to see that he has those attributes and you'll have to let him go because those things aren't things you're willing to compromise on. And you know, because you watched this video, <laughs> that you can't change him, that you can't change that or try to have this false belief that sometime down the road, if he loves you enough, he won't do that anymore. That's just who he is. Maybe sometime down the road, he won't do that anymore, but it's not a guarantee. It's not something to bet your money on because if he's doing it now, that means it's part of who he is. And it's better to just accept that as part of who he is than to try to change him because it's going to make you exhausted. It's going to make him exhausted and it's just not healthy. So accept the human being in front of you exactly as you are. Say, okay, is this human being exactly as they are without any alterations, someone that I can love as they are without changing a thing? If the answer is yes, awesome. That's your husband. Run with it. You're doing great. <laughs> if you're like, you know, this kind of bothers me, but I, you know, that's, you know, something I can totally be okay with and just allow, um, that to be part of who he is and I can just let go of my me wanting to change it also awesome run with that if you find that you are in a relationship even if you're freaking married it's worth it if you find that you're in a relationship and you have gotten out of the honeymoon phase <laughs> and you've realized that this is a human being and there's some parts of this human being that really, really bother you and they affect you every single day and there's something that you really, really, like the things you wanna change are a good, awesome. That's awesome that you wanna change that. I think that's really helpful because that shows you what you need to look at. You know, all the things we love, that's easy. We know we love them, that's fine. But the things that you want to change, that's good. Look at those. Get curious about those. Say, okay, this thing I want to change, is it something that I can accept? Awesome. If it is, fine. Go on to the next things that you want to change. If you find on your way of the things that you want to change in this person, something that's so, just something you cannot let go, that you cannot accept, that you cannot you know, get down with for the rest of your life or get past, that is an indication that you're not in the right relationship, that you need to love and let go. I know it's hard, but I, I am very confident that there is someone out there that is going to have all of the things that you love in this specific person, but they will not have that one thing that you cannot compromise on. Trust yourself. And also love yourself enough to find that person, to not settle, right? I think when we stay in that relationship and try to change that person, we are settling. Um, we're settling for something less than we deserve. Not saying that that person isn't worthy of love. Not saying that at all. That person is worthy of someone else's love, not your love. Um, so... The sooner that you can realize that you are not here to change anyone, the, oh, it feels so good, you guys. <laughs> it feels so good because then you're on, honestly giving up the responsibility of taking care of that person and their needs. Like, I always think about like whenever I'm in this mind space of like, oh, I want to say something to change someone. I'm like, okay, what would they do if you weren't here? they would figure it out themselves, right? They would they would figure it out, right? Life would help them figure it out. You're not their mom, like take a step back, <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I don't have to carry the weight of that anymore, right? It's, it's really heavy to try to fix someone. It's really, really heavy and it doesn't feel good to you and it doesn't feel good to them even if you think it does. So that was a lot but I think it's it's a really good tip. Now, that being said, as being kind of a control freak myself, I'm kind of like just a mother, like I'm just a motherly person. I would say that that's my personality. Um, 
instead of putting all of that energy and trying to change my friends and trying to change my husband and trying to change everyone except for me, because I think we do that so that we don't have to change ourselves, right? It's a lot easier to tell someone else what they need to do than doing it ourselves. Um, so instead of putting all my energy there, I let go of that. It felt euphoric. <laughs> like it felt so good to let go of that. And it's still a practice. Again, my innate my innate, um, like my first reaction is to try to control. So when I, every time I let go of it, I'm like, oh, that feels good. <laughs> but when I do that, all of a sudden I have that energy freed up to put onto myself and figure out the things that I want to change, the things that I want to show up to better. Um, especially if it's a specific thing, I'm like, how can I do that better in my own life? Because Really the only hope of changing someone, of you changing someone else, is by your example. And I know that sounds cliche and like just kind of like something you should dismiss. It's not, it's gold. The only chance that you have to truly inspire someone else to change themselves is by your example. So when you feel the need to change someone else, Take all of that energy and devote it to yourself. How can I be better at showing up to that specific thing so that I in my own life can be this like beaming light for someone to look at and say, oh, I could do it like that. You know, like, oh, I could show up like that. Like she, you know, like they're going to see it enough to be like, oh, that's an option right? Now you're giving them that option and that example to look to, to know how it's done, right? And it's not egotistical and saying like, I'm perfect, right? We all have things that another person is going to have to compromise on in order to love us fully and unconditionally. I'm not saying that, you know, I show up to our relationship and he doesn't have things to compromise on. Absolutely not. He absolutely does because we're all human. But what I am saying is maybe you do show up to something in your life a little bit better than your significant other does. And you can be that example for him or her or whatever it is, um, your partner, um, as well as he can do that for you or she can do that for you. Um, they, that's when I think the magic happens, when there's two individuals that have done this work that have you know maintained their individuality and have let go of this illusion that you come into a romantic relationship and you control each other and that they're there to make you happy okay I'm gonna add another tip onto this let go of the idea that the other person that you're in the relationship with is going to make you happy oh this gets me so riled up because I talked to so many women and I used to be this girl that thought that once she got into the relationship with the love of her life, that they were going to take care of all of her needs and she was going to be happy and it was going to be a fairy tale because everything that I ever desired, that person was going to give to me and I wouldn't have to be. It's kind of like giving up responsibility for your own life and having that person just take care of you and make sure that you're happy and that you're loved and that you're doing okay and, and they work out for you, they make all your meals for you, they meditate for you, they set healthy boundaries for you, they show up in relation, you know, like what? No, no, <laughs> that is not real, let that go. I don't know where that come from, came from, but we need to throw it in the trash bin because it's not real. You are responsible for you and your own happiness and everything honestly um that other person you know you know when you're married yes you can share like responsibilities that you share meaning like taking out the garbage and doing the dishes and the laundry and if you have kids like that stuff you can share with each other and help each other show up for but when it comes to your own inner happiness and, and your own self-care and just your own self, that's you, sister. That's you and God. If you believe in God, that's God that does that for you, not your significant other. <laughs> they are not here to make you happy. They're here to experience happiness with you. 
I know, again, it's easier for us to think of this with a friend. Your friends aren't there to make you happy. Your friends are the people that you go to that you're like, let's go to this concert so that we can be both stoked about this concert and literally cry because it's Khalid and we're dead because he's so amazing, <laughs> right? You're not like, you need to make me happy and you need to meet all my needs and if you don't, we can't be together. That's not real. And again, that will be exhausting and that will feel so horrible for that other person because they're gonna realize that they can't do it because they were never meant to do it. And you're gonna also be so confused because you're gonna be like, why can't you do this for me? <laughs> you know? So let go of the idea that another person is there to make you happy. They're not. That's a you job and only you. And the sooner that you can realize that, then again, it becomes fun. The way I look at marriage is two amazing, awesome human beings that are totally individual come together to experience their lives together, side by side. Two individuals experiencing life side by side <laughs> not I know there's a union right I know you share a lot of things right that person is your confidant you get to raise children with them you get to tell them about your day you get to you know eat all your meals together but again that's experiencing life together that's not saying that I don't know how to explain this any better I feel like I got my point across <laughs> it's not saying that this person is gonna make me happy and that they're gonna do all of the inner work for me that I am here to do on my own journey we both have our own set of challenges and set of lessons that we need to learn in this life and the other person can't learn the lesson for you they can't take away the struggles of this life. They can't make life 100% blissful. And the sooner that you can realize that, then the sooner that you can start working on yourself. I got a little frustrated when I brought up this point because I hear a lot of women, wait, they're just waiting, right? They haven't found the love of their life. So they're they're not doing any internal work. They're not loving themselves. They're not getting to know themselves. What they're saying is, when I find him, or when I find her, or when I fall in love, then I'll be happy. Then I'll feel good. I just need to find the right guy. I just need to find the right girl. Like, how many times do we hear that? What if you're the right guy? You're the right girl. That would be my argument. You are. You are all you need. I think that, I mean, this may be far-fetched, and again, I'm not saying I have it all figured out, but I do think that every person on this planet, if they truly wanted to, could live this entire life by themselves and be happier than all heck. Not by themselves in the way that you don't have any friends or like other people in your life, meaning like you wouldn't have to be in a romantic relationship and married to be at your peak of happiness and self-love. I think that you can do that all on your own. You don't have to, which is really cool. You get to marry someone if you want to and have that happiness just exponentially um, greater because you have two people experiencing that happiness side by side. You don't have to experience this alone. But what I'm saying is that you can get to that place all on your own. You don't need anybody else. So... Those are my five tips, but there was like seven. So <laughs> I hope that you got all of them. Thank you again for being here. Please like and all the different things that YouTubers say. Subscribe to my channel. Maybe share this with a friend that is thinking about getting married, just recently got married. Um, you guys, I am so excited to start talking more here on YouTube. It feels the most authentic to me. I love talking and it's a really great form to just talk for 45 minutes and have you guys hang out with me. Um, so again, thank you so much for being here. Your support, the things that I just told you to do, that's how you support me. Maybe you leave a comment. Um, maybe you check out my podcast. Maybe you follow me on Instagram. All of those things support me and my family and it's just, it means so much to me, more than you will ever know. So again, thank you for being here. I love you. You're you're doing great. You're going to have a very awesome, happy, successful marriage. And I hope that one of these tips helped you get closer to that. All right. Bye.